This concealer brush is fire. I'll be back, y'all. <laughs> it's seven o'clock on the dot I'm in my drop top. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I'm going out to have a drink with one of my girlfriends. And I'm just going to throw some clothes on. It's kind of last minute. But I just did a little concealer and eyebrows. I'm probably not going to put, I'm just going to put a lip on and just call it a day. You know, uh, I had to turn Usher off because I didn't want to get in trouble for playing his music. But I want to critique that performance. I know you guys didn't ask me to, but I want to critique that performance because sometimes I think I know stuff. So, um... Overall, I enjoyed the performance. Uh, it took me, when I first saw it, I did like it. And I was like, I was expecting just a tiny bit more. But the more I went back and watched it, I mean, it's been a week and I'm still watching it. I really and just digging it a whole lot more. I mean, yeah, a whole lot more. It took me a minute. I don't know why, but I was just kind of feeling like, oh, he could have done... I'm just going to do a little bit of eyeshadow. He could have done it. Okay, here's here's the issue I had. The issue was not him. The issue that I had is that I felt like it was too much going on out um in the in the performance, especially in the beginning. I felt like if you watch it when he came on, he was on the throne and he was kind of pimped to the side. Love that. The camera zoomed in good. But Usher was on the field. You could see the 50-yard line. He was on the field performing. That was a no-no to me. Usher should have been elevated the whole time. There were different stages, and he should have been on all of them all the time. He shouldn't have been at that eye level because it didn't photograph, it didn't uh, record well. When they were recording it and showing it to us, you know, broadcasting it, so to say, to me, it didn't come off well, and it looked like it was a bunch of mess out there. He had um, showgirls with pieces on top of their head. He had acrobats. He had dancers. All kinds of stuff was going on, and it was just too much. To me, he got, he was, you know, sort of caught, he was drowned by all that activity. And to me, if they wanted all that stuff, Usher should have been um, elevated. Now, eventually, he did make it over to a platform, which was good. And he he just never should have been at a level where he was blending in with all that stuff. I just didn't like that. I'm going to go with this Gucci lipstick in, I think they're calling it Odavi Red or something red. And that was my initial gripe. And I still feel that way. He, he you know, the the positioning of him... And all the stuff that was going on to me was was not good. Uh, song selection, 98% on point. I don't know if I would have opened up with Caught Up, but the more I listen to it, I'm feeling it. If I were him, I would have opened up with You Don't Have to Call. And when You Don't Have to Call came on, it was sort of anticlimactic because he was surrounded by the showgirls with all those blue feathers and to me, it kind of drowned it out the, the, the energy of You Don't Have to Call. You Don't Have to Call is a banger. That's my favorite song by Usher. When I think of Usher, favorite song, the first thing that comes to mind is You Don't Have to Call. Just like with Prince, the first song, if somebody says, what's your favorite Prince song? Automatically, The Beautiful Ones comes to mind, even before I start thinking of anything else. And that's how I feel about You Don't Have to Call. That's like... My favorite jam. And I might have opened up with that. Um, everything else was okay. To was I don't even want to say okay. Everything else was fine. When he tossed it over to Alicia Keys, he kind of was like, and she came on. I thought that was sharp. Her singing was not that great, but it wasn't that bad. I liked what him and her did. Um, even Jermaine Dupri with the... Confessions by like that. I love the transition from when he did um, Confessions and it went into Nice and Slow. I thought that transition was beautiful. I played that over and over. I just love how he did that. Those three songs, though, Nice and Slow, Burn, and um, Got It Bad, 
felt a little rushed. And they said that Usher had 15 minutes, but he only used 13 of them. That could have been stretched out just a little bit better because that cut in to when he would end one song and start the other. It just seemed a little off to me, just a tad bit. Um, the music was good. The band was good. I heard that if you saw it in person, it came off a little bit better, but it wasn't broadcasted as well as it could have been. None of that is Usher's fault. Usher is a hundred percent, a thousand percent that dude. 45 years old, dancing, roller skating, singing live. The mic was on. And, you know, he did a fantastic job. And I feel bad that I didn't love it as much as I do now when he first done it. But I'm the type of person that sometimes things have to sit in and I'm not impressed easily. But I'm going to tell you something. Um, I would put him up there in the top five as far as performances. A lot of people didn't like Rihanna last year. I liked Rihanna. I liked, I liked the energy and I liked the production of it. And Rihanna, they broadcasted her performance perfectly. That's how you ended up with all the, the vibes and the images and, and all the memes and all the people recreating different scenes from her performance because they broadcasted it so well. Ushers could have been broadcasted just a little bit better because he had so much going on. I'm, I, I could see that being a challenge, but um, it just could have been uh, broadcasted to a person like me sitting at home in my living room just a little bit better. Uh, little John Ludacris came through. I knew they would. Ludacris was fire. And overall, I, I'm, I'm so glad Usher got the opportunity. To me, he nailed it. Um, like I said, the only thing I would have done differently is probably had him elevated in the beginning and maybe cooled down a little bit of the activities that were going on. There was one guy that did a flip and landed on his head and then held the pose. And he was right in front of Usher when Usher was singing. Usher was singing, I think, You Don't Have to Call. And the guy landed like right in front of him. So while Usher's singing, you see the guy like this is Usher and this is the guy. That should never happen. If he was elevated, that wouldn't happen. And why are you doing all that anyway? It ain't about you, it's about Usher. So anyway, but overall, I loved it. I've been playing him. I play Usher a lot anyway. I have a playlist to him. And, you know, I just love Usher. But I'm going to say this and I'm going to end it. If you didn't go see him in Vegas, you should have gone to see him in Vegas. I always joke and say that seeing Usher in Vegas and seeing New Edition is a black girl's rite of passage. If you a black girl, you definitely should have been to see New Edition late, you know, in, in recent years because they were on tour a couple of years. You definitely should have been there and you definitely should have got your girls and went to see Usher in Vegas. I've seen Usher four times. I saw, I've seen him three times here in Chicago and I saw him in Vegas and the Vegas show was the best. The Vegas show, that was, that was an amazing show. And that's why in my mind, I said, I don't care if Usher gets out on that football field and farts and falls out. He's still going to be that dude to me because I know what he's capable of. And he's coming, um, he's launching a tour. He's coming to Chicago in like October and I will be there. I will be there. Me and my friends are either going to go together or I'm going to bust out and be there by myself like I was with Beyonce. But either way, I'm going to be there. Okay, I'll check in with you guys later when I get to the restaurant. Okay, so my outfit of the day is really just something I threw together. I am digging my little turtleneck. I got this sleeveless uh, wool turtleneck from Target. It was on sale for $9 and it's in chocolate brown, which is my jam right now. And I'm going to uh, match it up with my Bottega Veneta bag that I got off of the Real Real. I cleaned this bag up. Of course, it was pre-loved. It wasn't pre-loved. When I got it, it was nice and dirty, but I cleaned it up. It looks super good now, and I'm carrying it. My little jeans, I got these from Nordstrom, and I got all my big chunky Frankenstein boots from Aqua, and since I'm doing Target, I'm rocking these Target shades that I got last year. They were probably 12 bucks and they are so cute. Now for a coat, I'm trying to figure out if I should wear just a wool jacket or should I do my fluffy coat? 
The only thing is I think it's super cold, so the fluffy coat might not be warm enough. So I think I'm gonna go with the wool cup. That's crazy. So I'm on Milwaukee Avenue meeting with my friends and I don't even know where we're going. Just walking. Excuse me, pretty girl. <laughs> I kind of like these. Fairy berries looking at the green and that's like a plum, you can't really tell. This picture, what does it say, Barry? Girls love money. Yes, we do. I bought some sneakers. I'm gonna do this, I'll show you guys when I get back home. All right, guys, we are back. So I ended up not going out to eat or drink, which is cool because when I go out to eat and drink, um, I usually eat and drink. So I'm gonna eat at home today. But we did pop into a couple stores in the area. We were on that, if you're from Chicago, we were on that North Milwaukee Avenue area. I don't know if that's Wicker Park or not, but we just kind of popped into a couple other stores around there. And um, I just picked up a couple things. Nothing was really planned, but there were a couple of items that I just couldn't resist. So we're, we're gonna do like a mini haul. And yesterday I picked up um, a bag that I wanna show you guys too. So, hey, let's get started. This is gonna be a short video. So we dropped into Adidas and I don't have a lot of things by Adidas, but I do have a warm up suit, the typical black run DMC one, the black one with the stripes. I don't have any Adidas gym shoes. So I grabbed these. They don't go with my little warm up suit, but I picked them up because I was really digging the color. And I, I, I kind of wanted a brownish gym shoe, but I didn't want a brownish gym shoe because I have these Prada shoes if you recall, these little Prada loafers, they're like an espresso chocolate brown. I've had these a couple months. And these can kind of fill the same space that a gym shoe would because they have the rubber sole. Whatever I would wear a gym shoe with, I could probably get away with these except for maybe a sweatsuit. So when I saw these shoes in Adidas, I grabbed these because of the color. I was really digging the color. And it was given brown, but not brown. I picked up these sneakers. These are, the, these are the Samba. And these are like a burgundy or oxblood. And I got these in a nine. I normally wear a 10. They run kind of big. I was able to grab these in a nine. And I love the trim because the trim is ivory. It's not white. And I also have a couple, I have, I have ideas. I have some things I can do with these. I know I have a bag that will go with this. And this shade also goes well with brown too. So I was really um, kind of happy to pick these up. I didn't plan it, but I just grabbed them. And then, oh, I'm sweating. We went into Free People and I grabbed a couple items out of there. I'm a sunglass chick, baby. And usually, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I usually get the, the sunglass sunglasses. But this time, um, I was able to go into Free People and grab these really nice shades. I got two pair, and they were only $25 each. Everything doesn't have to be high-end, baby, because these are cute. <laughs> really cute. This is like an olive green, which kind of looks like brown in a way. Super cute. And the other pair... 
once again, only $25 a piece as opposed to all the other stuff that we buy. These are like a cognac. And these are cute too. The quality is good enough for me. I mean, they're plastic, but you know, unless you're getting hit in the face and hit in the eyes, any pair of sunglasses will hold up. <laughs> I don't plan on getting smacked in the eye. So these should be good. And lastly, I told you this is a short one. I um, went into Tory Burch yesterday. I went to the outlet because there was a bag I'd had my eye on and I was kind of waiting to see if it would go on sale at the outlet, which it didn't. So I just went on ahead and grabbed it because I'm like, whatever, it's not gonna go down. And you know, when you buy stuff from the outlet, they give you a nice shopping bag, but they don't give you a good bag bag. They don't give you a um, dust bag, you get plastic. And I think this has, a cloth, there might be something in here. I can see, it might be a cloth bag in here. But the, one of the reasons why I wanted to grab this particular bag is because I like monochromatic sometimes. I love bags that have metals on them, either gold or silver, but I also like bags that have nothing on it, just all black leather or all brown leather where you can't really see the hardware. I like bags like that because I kind of get stuck on silver or gold and Sometimes I, when you have a bag that doesn't have any metal on it, you can wear silver or gold. So I had my eye on this bag and I went ahead and grabbed it. This is, I think it's called the Nikki. I'm not sure. And I'll list it down below if you guys want to know. So this is a true unboxing because I didn't even pull it out the paper yesterday. So this was like 40% off and it has the top handle and it's sort of a matte material. This is, this is leather, it's not um, nylon, this is actually leather. And this is the look. It's kind of giving a Chanel vibe and I actually wanted a Chanel that looked like this. I want a black Chanel top handle and Chanel does have one that has the um the black metal but I, I I'm just not ready to, to cough up that kind of money I don't know if I'll ever be ready to cough up the kind of money they want for that bag so we went to Tory Burch and we grabbed this little girl and she is too cute there is a strap in here I believe yeah there's a crossbody strap there's a pocket inside it's canvas like a beige canvas inside um a metal I mean, not metal, um, magnetic clasp that snaps real easily. And this is too, too cute. So I grabbed that yesterday from Tory Burch. And there's something that I want to get when I was in that outlet mall. There's a, a perfume store called Dubai something, a perfume Dubai. And they have a lot of the cool scents in there. They really call them the Middle Eastern brands or scents or fragrances, and they sell the stuff a little bit less than what you would get like at Nina's. Like they have mind games and they sell it for maybe about 20 bucks less. And they have um, the, uh, what's the one I like by Marley, um, Delana, they have that too. And I almost pulled the trigger and bought, you know, the two cents that I won. It, you know, the girl was like, yeah, you know, I'll give you a little deal if you pay cash, you know, you don't have to pay the taxes. And these are the actual real bottles. They're not bootleg. They're not in a kiosk. They're in an actual store. And I did the research um, on this store and, the, and they are, you know, certified, um, I guess, wholesalers for this, for these brands. And I didn't do it. I didn't buy any perfume because a part of me is like, okay, you can spend that kind of money on the scent that you want, but are you really going to use it? I don't empty my perfume bottles, so I really have to think, do I want to spend the money on it? And the Mind Games, the scent I want is Impress, and I do have that travel size, but that scent is so good that I want a bottle. So I might go back and get it. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But that's all for today. This was pretty simple. These were things that I hadn't really set out to buy except for maybe my bag, and I just wanted to show them to you guys. And thanks for tuning in again. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I think I'm going to do something with my hair. Either I'm going to get it cut and I'm going to take you guys with me or I'm just going to do it and show you guys 
how I do my various styles. If you're interested, let me know. But again, thank you for tuning in to Everyday Fifi. Remember to like and subscribe and tell your friends to come on over here. You can check out my old videos. Thank you, guys. Thank you.